Let me show you how easy it is to build an ARP pattern like this. It's a lot of fun! Hello everyone, welcome back, Dom here and in this video I'm going to talk about a Cubase feature that many people forget that it exists, many people don't even know that it exists and this feature will allow you to create MIDI parts like the wind even if you have no keyboard skills whatsoever and that's the step MIDI input. Let's talk about it right after this. Before we get started, I want to ask you how many of you knew about the step MIDI input before watching this video? Let me know in the comments down below and let me know how you use it because I'd be really interested to know how you guys use it. And if you like this kind of videos, please subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon and also hit a like, I would really appreciate it. Okay, let's get started. So, what is the step MIDI input? Step MIDI input is basically really, really convenient if you want to start creating music easily if you're not a keyboard player. But even if you are a keyboard player, it's still very useful because it gives you a very different vibe, a very different sound to just playing things on the keyboard. Let's start using it, right? Because it's super, super simple. So, let's start with this Retrolog bass I have here. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my locators left and right, eight bars, and I'm going to double click in between these locators. Check it out. So this way I create a part. Now let's open this part. This is my key editor in Cubase, and as you know, I can start recording here. Very, very simple, very self-explanatory. But let me show you how you can use the step input. So all you need to do is click on this icon right here. You can see that? this little icon here, so you click on that and as you can see a new blue cursor appears here. This is separate to this cursor. Now, imagine the step input mode like a typewriter or like a you know, word processor. Basically, you have your cursor and while you write, it moves to the next letter, right? It's exactly like that. But instead of a letter, we have a note. So let me show you some tricks that I use to make this process super, super simple. Let's start with the basics. Let's say I want to create a nice arpeggiated part for this retrolog bass. So all I need to do now is I can start playing notes on my keyboard, okay? So now I'm going to use my keyboard and I'm going to start playing some notes. Okay, and as you can see, let me just zoom in a little bit. I can just enter the notes, the pace doesn't matter, the tempo doesn't matter, I'm just inputting notes and these end up like 16th notes in my key editor. Now, you might say, why 16th notes? Why not quarter notes? Why not eighth notes? Well, you can change this right here with a quantize value, okay? So now if I change this, check it out. See, now I made it eighth notes or I can make it 32nd notes and so on and so forth. So one of the things that I do, and I've shown this on my favorite key commands video back in the day, is I have my quantize value, increase and decrease, set to the bracket keys on my keyboard. So I can do this very, very easily, see? Very, very simple. So now I can use my left and right keys to move the cursor to the next or previous step. So let's start from scratch, I'm going to click here and I'm going to place my cursor at the very beginning. Let's start. Doesn't matter what tempo I played at, right?
Great. And now we're back at the beginning. Now, why did that happen? That happens because I had my cycle activated. So cycle activated, deactivated. If I didn't have cycle deactivated, it would still keep going beyond the boundaries of the loop here. Now, if I play this back, And I love this feature because it allows me to create custom arpeggios very, very easily. And then I can start applying different settings on my synths, try out different things. For example, for this one, I would go and do... You know, it's so much fun. So this is the basic thing that you can do with the step input. Now, as you can see, a very important thing is that you can see that all the velocities here are the velocities that I played on my keyboard. So that means that if you're trying to create really nice natural parts that don't sound mechanical, this is great because as you can see, Every note has its own velocity and it sounds humanized. Now, if you want to make this the other way around, you want to make this completely mechanical, no problem. You can just click on this icon here. See, by the way, if you can't see this on your key editor, just right click and then just make sure that your step MIDI input is activated. Okay, this is very important. So let's say I want to go beyond this part and I want to go here. So wherever I place my mouse, I can set the cursor. Let's go here. And now I will deactivate the record note on velocity. And now you will see that it's exactly the same velocity on each note. And what velocity is this? This is determined here. So for example, if I go 127, it will input notes with a velocity of 127. So that's really, really useful, especially if you want to program drums, electronic drums, and you let's say you want to have your kick drum always at 127 velocity. I tend to keep this on because I want to have things sounding natural. And when I'm doing drums, I disable it. So I think you get the point. It's very easy to come up with drum patterns. It's great if you want to create like arpeggios, but not even that, even chords. Another thing that I want to show you before I finish this video is the difference between the step input and the MIDI input. Now the step input works exactly like you saw right now. With a MIDI input, you can change existing notes. For example, here, you can see that I have this arpeggiator that we just created earlier. If I go here and start selecting one note, now I can change this note by playing on the keyboard. So I'm keeping the same rhythm, but what happens is every note gets transformed depending on what I play on my keyboard. So it changes the pitch and also the velocity. Check it out. See? So it's very easy to change an entire arrangement very, very quickly. I use this trick all the time to create thirds or sixths. Uh, for example, if I have a violin ostinato and it goes like doo -doo 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 -doo, then I duplicate the part and I use the MIDI input to create the new notes. So it's very powerful and I think that many people forget about these features. Now I'm going to activate step input once more and I'm going to show you one last thing, and that's the move insert mode. Now, what this does is instead of adding more notes, okay, if I do this, I can keep adding more notes to this part. But if I activate 
the move insert mode, what happens is while I'm inserting new notes, everything else that was there before is going to be shifted to the right. So check it out. Okay, so that's again a very neat feature. You can use it if you want to add some parts before everything else, but still keep everything where it is so you don't have to move things around in the project window. You can do everything in the key editor. So you can imagine with a step input, you can basically create MIDI parts like the wind. It's so, so fast. And the great thing is if you're not a keyboard player and you have even a tiny MIDI keyboard, you can create some really, really amazing arrangements just by using the step input. So I hope you enjoyed this video. In the comments down below, let me know how you use step input yourselves. I'd really like to know. And if you enjoyed it, give it a like. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, I hope you have loads of fun with step inputs. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.